Power Sequencer 1.5 is out. The latest release of this free and open source add-on for the video sequence editor is gonna be included in Blender once again, and it brings mostly a bit of polish to an add-on that's getting pretty mature already. So I'm going to show you the main new features that are the ability to override existing footage in a channel below or above your current video, right? Instead of having to, well, let's say I'm going to trim that and then I need to expand the videos and move my clip. You can do all that in a single operation, like in pretty much every video editing program out there, or professional one at least. So you have that and you also have some improvements, tweaks, bug fixes to things like the trim tool. Uh, also some fixes to scene related operators. So you have some tools to, where is it? There you go. You have some tools to um, convert to scene. Let's see, I have them there, power sequencer. So you can um, create from the selection, like create a scene strip. I'm going to go to create from selection and it creates a new scene with the strips I just had selected there, which is quite convenient when you want to split your files, split your work into self-contained scenes, right? Um, so these needed some fixes. It's now there. Uh, they should be working as expected. From there, I'm focusing on the latest version of Blender that's in development at the time of recording, but that's also breaking compatibility a bit with the add-on. So um, you can see this is Blender 2.83 beta. And now we have new drawing in the sequence view, which is much welcome. We also have finally the ability to edit the last comment directly on the screen, like in the rest of Blender, without having to press F9, right? So uh, you can switch the options of your latest operator or operations directly in the view. Another much welcome improvement um, in the sequencer is the toolbar. Now you have few tools, for now, they're still in development, but you have select, box select, and you also have the blade that allows you to cut stuff, right? Split the strips. And so I'm working on a trim tool that's still a bit bare bones. So you can click and drag to delete stuff. And when you click and drag, I think if I press, right, if you press control, you can snap around. If you press shift, you can also trim everything at the same time and it will remove gaps as well. So this is the current trim tool that's available with the T uh, shortcut, Shift T and uh, T. They are now becoming an interactive tool that's much easier to discover. And this will be in the next release of Blender. And by the way, I'll see if people want it included in Vanilla Blender because part of the goal with Power Sequencer is to contribute to the sequencer. So now the toolbar is becoming stable. I think we can start moving some features from Power Sequencer to Vanilla Blender. Tell me what you think. I'll let you try the add-on. You have the release in the video description below if you want the latest version. Otherwise you have it included in Blender. So if you press Control U, if you go to the preference window to the add-ons, you can look for power sequencer. Sorry, they are expanded right now. And you have one included in Blender. You should see it in your Blender install directory. Here it's a snap on uh, Ubuntu. And I have a custom version installed as well, my development version. But with that, I want to thank you kindly for watching. Be creative, have fun. Let's see one another in the next one. Oh, and I should mention, I'm still looking to make a tutorial for Power Sequencer, but right now I would like to wait for version 2.83 to be out as, as you can see, it changes some of the visuals of the sequencer and we have the toolbar, which is going to change 
how some of the interactions work. Thank you. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.